Good morning from Seoul! We are at our hotel in Gangnam and we've been staying in Hongdae. That's where our Airbnb is. We decided spontaneously last night to ditch our Airbnb early, book a five-star hotel in Gangnam because this is our honeymoon after all. We had a great night of sleep and today we are heading to Seoul Forest, Songsu, where there's so many great cafes and I can't wait to show you. So, should we go? Yep. Look at this view first. Ooh, wow. Wait, let me show your outfit of the day. This is his nice shirt. And he got these pants from eight seconds. Eight seconds. Nike shoe, my OOTD bucket hat, eight second shirt, jeans from home. Got these shoes. It's a Korean brand. Love a chunky white sneaker. So here's my outfit. Okay, let's go get coffee. First of all, it's absolutely beautiful here. But the first couple of days we were here, what was the pollution level at? 150. Like 150. And back home it's like 30. 30. So you could see it in the sky. It was very yellow. You couldn't really see clouds. I mean, I don't see clouds here at all. It was really hazy. Just it was like very hazy. Away. And we spent a lot of time biking. We were wearing masks most of the time, but sometimes I just want to hold a cozy drink and drink that while I'm walking. So I don't always want to wear a mask. So yeah, it affected Andrew a lot more than me. Now we've got his medicine. So, there's several cafes. How do you cafe hop? Do you literally go drink at every cafe? Well, people who like cafe hop, they're not necessarily doing it all in one day. They'll do like a coffee in the morning and then maybe like a lunch and like a snack. Maybe like two or three. There's one place that specialized in like a caramel, a little caramel drink. I, I really want an iced caramel latte. time. The first time we came to Songsu was two days ago and it was a really bad day and I shared more about it in my postcards from Seoul recaps that I've been doing on Instagram but basically we biked here. It was supposed to take an hour. It took an hour and 40 minutes because we got a little turned around. <laughs> and just slow on like the city bikes you know not as normal as like that. You're at home bike. There are so many people here. That's the thing. Look there's literally nobody here right now. Yeah, when we came on Saturday, it was a sea of people. We felt overstimulated, we were starving, we were exhausted from biking. So now it's Monday, and it sounds like Monday was the right decision. Never coming back here on the weekend. <laughs> so where do you feel it? It's like lower back, arms. Hold your arms. Whoa! <laughs>
cheese. It's so pretty, it's like a little flower. but the, the right side, the more industrial side of Songsu. I definitely prefer the other side, closer to Seoul Forest, because there's just more density of coffee shops to choose from. It's like the definition of density. But here is a really large, this is probably one of the biggest coffee shops I've ever been to. I mean, I guess it's a coffee shop and they have food and they have some beer, but it definitely has more of a coffee shop vibe. It seems like an outdoor pizzeria bar but it's like more centered around coffee. Okay, so I wanted to ask you, what has been your rose and thorn of the trip so far? My thorn is not knowing enough Korean. Like my reflexes are like a little bit of French or Spanish. So if I'm like caught off guard and like I have to say something You're in like, return. like, si. yeah, I mean, ne. I was like, <laughs> un, you know, I was like, un. And un. I'm like, oh, it's, it's like, like yeah, totally. Wrong. So <laughs> I think that's a little bit of a thorn. Like not that they care, but it's just funny. The language barrier, I did expect that. I had a feeling that I would just be saying, kamsamida. I'm going to say a lot and that's it. So my thorn is when we don't plan enough. I think like you don't have to plan your whole trip, but if you're coming to Korea, I think it's a good idea to sit down and talk about what are your expectations for the day and pick out food and drink places ahead of time because sometimes you might get there and it's closed or you get there and it's just not what you expected. Having an option, option A, option B, and being prepared and not waiting until you're past the point of no return hunger and then try to find something because there's often a long wait. You have to put your name down on a list and you might have to wait an hour. Waiting here is a very normal thing. Yeah. Advice if you're coming to Korea, bring snacks, something to tie you over and drink lots of water and bring a mask because the air pollution is pretty bad some days. The first two days we were here, it was really bad. Today, not too bad. It was really nice. Yeah. Just like a plus one on your thorn, places might open at like noon. But you're like, oh, like it's a coffee shop, but it might open at noon. So things like that. Don't assume everything's open when you think it's open. Yeah. Although, you can look it up on your phone, but if you're looking it up, look it up on Naver. Don't look it up on Google Maps because Google Maps has let us down several times, but neighbor, it should be accurate. Although, it will be in Korean, so just make sure you can know how to read when it says open or when it's closed. Red means it's closed, green means it's open. What's your rose? The rose is, it's a very walkable, very like, active city. I like being able to feel safe walking around everywhere. I feel like that's a big one. Like We've gone from really busy streets to really empty streets. And I feel like in New York, you're like, oh, like, is this safe? You know, like, we walk like, down alleyways without even a thought. Yeah. We are aware of our surroundings, though. We know things can happen. Yeah. But we feel very safe here. Like, I am carrying my camera across my chest. I have a fanny pack. Just, I don't know, everything just felt really clean, really safe. I feel like just the amount of like, trust culturally that's here. Well, like, leaving your drink outside of the store, oh, yeah. you're not worried about someone roofing it. <laughs> At the beginning of a store, they'll have like, a little cart and it's like, oh, yeah, drop your coffee's off here because they don't want you carrying coffee inside and that's like really normal but also like totally accepted by everybody like there's like dozens or like at the park you could leave your bag outside before going into the bathroom yeah and you i mean <laughs> <laughs> you, you were gonna say well you were in there for a while yeah i was about to text you like are you okay yeah any chance i can try to go number two i i tried um, this is gluten by the way this is a cheesecake so I do want to talk about that. My stomach felt like trash last night. 
but I was able to go to the bathroom this morning, which is a win for me because typically when I eat gluten and other things I'm allergic to, it just backs my system up. <laughs> What's our inside joke? I hope you have a shitty day. So that was fine today. I did the thing. So I've been trying to eat a little bit of gluten here and there. It's unavoidable. In the very beginning of the trip, the first two days, I had a lot of anxiety around like, can I eat this? I mean, I know there's gluten in here. Is this meal worth the gluten? I don't want to just show up at a random restaurant and just eat something because I'm starving and that's the only thing available and I eat something that has gluten and it wasn't worth it. I want it to be so delicious and so worth the pain I'm gonna feel later. <laughs> that's why I like to be prepared for our meals and make sure like, I research it. I'm like, this is a delicious place. I'm gonna enjoy every bite and hope for the best later. But last night we had a fancy four course prefixed Hanwu steak dinner and it was delicious. There was definitely gluten in that meal. And I actually got like a hive on my arm last night. So I took Benadryl because sometimes I don't know if it's gonna like spread. You were snoring, you were dead asleep. I was conked out. For the record, I only snore when I'm like demolished. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I, like tired beyond belief. Yeah. Once I took the Benadryl, I, I conked out too. Question for you. Hmm? What's something that we haven't done yet that you're like, oh, I gotta do it? It's very specific. I want to eat a corn dog at the Han River, like in startup, the K-drama startup. That is my update on gluten, celiac, and what I've been doing. I've been treading lightly and carefully, eating things that I think are worth it, trying to be as prepared as I can with researching things. Obviously eating a cheesecake to me is worth it, but I know my gut is gonna have to do some reset when I get home. So I'm not thinking about it much right now. What's something that surprised you about Korea? I feel like a foreigner, but I've been here before, so I did have some expectations of what it would be like. However, I was not aware of the cafe culture. I don't even know if it really was a thing back then, because I was 12 or 13 when I came here. I know they said coffee is big here. It is literally out of this world. The amount of cute cafes anywhere in town, it's just abundant. The coffee's delicious, and the aesthetics are so... It's my heaven. <laughs> That's why I was complaining earlier. I'm like, I've only had one coffee today. Yeah. I cannot just be having one coffee a day. There's so many cafes. I need to go to as many as possible. That's the thing that surprised me the most too. Really? Yeah. Someone said- As a non-coffee drinker. Yeah, as a non-coffee drinker. I've been doing like lemonade or tea or something because I don't think this place would have forced it, but I feel like at normal size coffee shops or small coffee shops, like if you're sitting there, you have to get a drink. Oh yeah, that was a new thing for us. Culturally, if you're going to a restaurant or a cafe and you're both gonna sit down, you yeah. both have to order something. Oh, well, not even that. I got like a croissant or something and they're like, you have to get a drink. And I was like, uh, and I was oh, just yeah. like, I don't want a drink. So you can't just order <laughs> yeah. one thing. It's like you each have to get a drink, even yeah. if you don't want a drink. That actually gave me like a little bit of anxiety going to some places. I'm like, oh, God, I just want to sit. Because we're like, you know, being tourists, we're like walking around everywhere, like 30,000 steps a day kind of thing. Wait, 30,000 steps? We did like 20,000 one day. No, we didn't. Really? Like 18? Okay, I might be no, exaggerating. No, we did not do 30,000. I think we did like 15,000. We're 000. walking over 10 miles a day. And it's <laughs> Some of these, okay. The day that we got really lost and we were depleted and it was very dramatic, that was the day where I kept doing everything wrong. Yeah. I sat in the pregnant person seat. There's a seat on the subway reserved for pregnant people, and I knew that, but I just didn't see the sign because I was just so depleted that I just sat there. Yeah. I think I told you, oh, there's a seat. <laughs> and I just sat there. What was the other thing that I, that I did? Oh, we went to a restaurant. <laughs> it was kind of embarrassing. <laughs> this was the second or third restaurant we had tried to go to. Like, but it was so busy, yeah. Yeah. And this one, we thought we could sit down. And Why this, did I think I could just sit down? I don't, I don't know. But there was an open table, and Jules was like, oh, I thought we can sit down. I'm like, okay, cool. We sit down, we're like looking at the menu. I go up to order, and they're like, did you like check in? And we're like, what? <laughs> and they're like, you need to be on the list to even like sit down. And also they're speaking to us in Korean, so we're just like. Yeah, so it wasn't that clear at first. And so then we, I had to awkwardly get up, like, I left. can't be here. We were doing everything wrong. We felt like such foreigners that day. I mean, that's, that's another thorn was the SIM card situation. Not all SIM cards are created equal in Korea. There are like data phone numbers, which literally is just for data. And then there's phone numbers that you can receive texts or make calls or whatnot. Get the one yes. that Get. you can make texts and calls. Yes, because 
at most of these restaurants, like any restaurant worth going to, because there's like a line and, and like it's good, it's delicious, they require you to like put your phone number in to get like a push notification when it, your, your table's ready. You really cannot avoid not putting your phone number in. Yeah. Like I would say a lot of these travel blogs had said it was kind of optional to get a Korean SIM card or Korean number. Not true. You need a Korean number yeah. if you want to go eat any good food. Yeah. That's our update. We're having a great time. All the dogs here are too cute to be to believe. Yeah. There are so many cute dogs. The weather has been amazing. It's gonna rain tomorrow though, so I'm just soaking yeah. in every last bit. Most people have like sweatshirts on and jackets. And I don't know, I don't understand how. Even in the morning, it's like slightly chilly. And then it gets, I don't know, it gets like hot and people are still walking around in coats. We're gonna be uh, humbled when we get back to Austin. It'll probably be triple digits. Probably gonna be 100.